Hi guys, welcome to Raw Online. So this is Dr. Ashok. So I have recently cracked the NEET uh, super specialty exam uh, connected during the year 2023 and I have joined DM Virology at Government Thinalveli Medical College and Hospital. And like this video is all about the strategies which I followed for cracking the exam and I hope it will be useful for you guys. And uh, I will uh, show you the various uh, strategies which I followed, what are the various guidelines which I followed and uh, what are the various experiences from my past NEET examination and uh, how I cracked the exam during this attempt and uh, I hope this uh, video will be a uh, useful tool for you to crack the exam which is intended for super specialty examination. So post MD microbiology like we have uh, DM in uh, genetics then we have DM in uh, infectious diseases and we have DM in uh, virology and DM virology the like, feeder qualification is going to be the MD or DNB in microbiology. So I have uh, cracked the microbiology group and I have joined my uh, DM course through the NEET examination. So let me show you the various strategies which I followed for cracking the examination. So strategy number one, you have to be very strong with the basics of microbiology at postgraduate level. So many of you who are watching this video is going to be the postgraduate aspirants who is going to prepare for the super specialty examination. So like uh, during your MD DNB microbiology, like make sure you are going to follow the standard books and also the Indian books which is useful for studying the various guidelines and the treatment pertaining to the India. And there are like various books like Javert's, Koneman, then we have the Mickey McCartney and we have the Indian textbook uh, authors like Anantanarayanan uh, textbook and we have the Apoorva Sastri Sir's book. So which is intended for the both essentials of uh, microbiology and the hospital infection control. So make sure like you are going to study those uh, books and uh, be strong in the basics. And being strong at the basic, it has to be very much important and uh, uh, it plays a major role in cracking the basics of the examination. So in, whenever like we are going to go for a competitive examination, few of the questions are going to be the basic. And if you are going to be strong in basic, like those basic question is going to be an cup and passer for you and you are going to clear it off easily. And strategy number two is going to try to solve multiple choice question uh, regularly. So like you can subscribe various packs in the various uh, organization and you can also clear various MCQs. So per day like you can try to clear around 150 to 200 MCQs regularly. So the main important thing about uh, multiple choice question is that so the more you are going to go wrong in the multiple choice question you are going to learn more in the multiple choice question. It's not about how much you are going to get correct and it's going to be like how much error you are going to make uh, during the solving of the particular multiple choice question and the more you are going to get it wrong the more you are going to learn and there is going to be reason how you went wrong and uh, you are going to rectify it. So this is about the strategy number two which is going to be a very essential tool for cracking your neat super specialty examination. Strategy number three to follow various uh, standard guideline like CLSI guideline like uh, these particular guideline they issue a set of rules that has to be followed for the reporting of organism what are the various antimicrobial and what are the various discs which can be tested for the particular organism and how it has to be tested and and they clearly tell about the footnote like the particular organism is uh, resistant to what group of antibiotics and what has to be reported and what should not be reported and what kind of uh, antibiotics can be extrapolated for what group of antibiotics. So those kind of uh, everything pertaining to the antimicrobial detail of the particular organism will be issued by this kind of uh, guideline like CLSI which stands for Clinical and Laboratory Standard Institute. So be sure to be thorough with the CLSI footnote and also to be sure with the intrinsic resistance note. So they can give you a scenario where the particular uh, patient is going to suffer from uh, pneumonia and uh, suspicion of uh, pseudomonas is there and the particular clinician have started on amoxiclav. Like at that particular time you should know that the particular pseudomonas is going to be intrinsically resistant to the particular amoxicillin clavulonic acid. So this kind of thing has to be make sure and this particular thing can be asked in the examination. Any organisms can be given their intrinsic organism uh, resistance can be checked for. With this like moving on to the strategy number four. So make sure you are going to be thorough with these kind of the high yield topics. So these particular uh, points are the high yield. So make sure you are going to be like thorough with these kind of organisms like HIV and any sexually transmitted infection including Azeria gonorrhea and viral infection like polio, rabies, herpes and various oncogenic virus and their mechanism and blood borne virus like hepatitis B, hepatitis C including HIV and human papilloma virus what are the various strain causing what kind of infections and what are the various types of adenovirus and strain of adenovirus going to cause diarrhea, urinary tract infection and conjunctivitis. And other viral infection like respiratory viral infection and diarrheal infection like you should be thorough what are the various organisms and how we are going to diagnose and what are the set of guidelines that is issued for the diagnosis of this kind of condition like make sure like you guys be thorough with this kind of high yield topic. 
be strong with the immunization practices and the antigen used to for the strain and the vaccination so like example like oka strain or uh, like we have like various strain like a 17d vaccination like what are the various strain used and you should be thorough with those kind of strain and the indian immunization pattern like again like you should be thorough so be sure with the hcc practices uh, including updation pertaining to this kind of infection so this is about strategy number four so strategy number five immunization itself like uh, guys be strong with the immunization like uh, follow the recent indian immunization guideline and make sure you know about uh, each vaccination like uh, how it is derived and what are the various strain used like i previously told like oka strain for what and we have the 17 d vaccination like what is the specific name which is used for the particular vaccination and what are the various age group like where we are going to give the vaccination and you should also be thorough about the particular uh, age group in which the particular uh, vaccination has to be given and what are the contraindication for the vaccination and what are the newer updations which is followed and what are the various optional vaccines which is available for the protection of various infection like make sure you, you guys be thorough about uh, this kind of infection so that's going to be the strategy number five which you should be very much thorough and strategy six is going to be about, uh, all about uh, hospital infection control and biomedical waste so as a microbiologist like we should be on uh, bread and butter in this kind of particular topic and make sure you are going to follow the recent guideline and uh, there are various amendments that is going to be there like time to time and make sure you are going to know about both new and old it is essential to know about both the new and the old guideline and what are the various uh, thing which will you follow for needle stick injury and what are the various uh, color coded uh, bags which we use for the discard and how it is going to get discarded and uh, you should be thorough like the particular plastic waste will go to the red and the non plastic waste will go to the yellow and uh, the discarded medication again like they are going to go for yellow and the general waste is going to go for the green and the sharp will be going for the sharp container white container and all the, all about the particular thing like you should be very much thorough and any amendments in this particular thing like it has to be carried out and it has to be checked and uh, updated regularly so this is about the hcc and biomedical waste management so hospital infection control and biomedical waste you should be very much thorough guys like multiple choice question from this particular topics can be coming in multiple numbers so make sure like you are going to be strong in this particular topic so the seventh strategy is going to be the various radiological imaging like which is pertaining to the particular infection so whenever like we are going to study an infection there is going to be a radiological uh, uh, science example there can be a cyst with dot sign which is going to be there in the neurocystic sarcosis and the snowflake sign and water lily sign which is going to be there in the echinococcus infection or hydratitis infection so this kind of infection like there is going to be a specific uh, radiological image when we are going to do ultrasound or x-ray or ct or mri there is going to be a certain finding which is specific for the particular infection make sure you are going to note it down and you are going to study it so this kind of radiological imaging again like they can be repeated in multiple numbers so make sure you are going to be thorough in this particular topic and strategy number eight it's going to be like they can give you certain picture and ask you to identify what kind of uh, test is that so they can give you like picture like a complement fixation test and various staining procedure like macfadian staining and the negative staining and we have the albert stain then we have the acid fast stain and we have the acid fast stain which is performed in stool to identify the coccidian parasite so those kind of images can be given and you can be asked to find out what kind of uh, staining or what kind of organism you are able to see and this is very important and you should also learn about the techniques like shell vial techniques and line probe assay like they can give you the image and you must be able to identify what technique is that and what technique which they are following like you should be able to identify so this is about the strategy number eight and the strategy number nine it's going to be the strategy which is going to cover the histopathological image especially the viral infection so whenever like you guys study about any viral infection like make sure you are going to study the type of inclusion body like uh, what are the various intracytoplasmic inclusion body then intranuclear inclusion body which are all the infections which is going to produce both intracytoplasmic and intranuclear inclusion body and what is cowdery type a and what is cowdery type b so keep some mnemonic and try to read guys so it will be easy for you and try to be uh, thorough with the various parasitic infection on their histopathological image so they can give you the image like trichinella and they can ask you to identify and make sure like any parasitic infection like few of the parasitic infections can produce uh, histopathological uh, differences make sure like you guys going to be thorough with this kind of histopathological difference and able to uh, diagnose a particular condition by seeing the histopathological image so strategy number 10 is going to be the mycology images such as mold with pigmentation and the yeast colonies in various agar like chrome agar and what are the various colony morphology in sda and niger seed agar then we have the dermatophytes medium so you must be able to identify the colony morphology by using the both and they can also give you the lpcb mount and also give you the gram staining picture and 
can ask you to identify the particular pathogen and you must be able to identify and lactophenol cotton blue mount it's going to be very important guys make sure you are going to split it into various topics like dermatophyte then we have the muca rhizopus then we have the aspergillus penicillium and what are the various uh, uh, thing like a medullary body line chromoblastomycosis everything like make sure you are going to split the topic and you are going to read all the images which is pertaining to the topic so this is about the strategy number 10 so with this like i'm moving to the strategy number 11 so here like make sure whenever you are going to study the infection like make sure you are going to follow the uh, guideline which is pertaining to the infection so especially like when you are going to read something like stds or hiv make sure you are going to update yourself with the recent guideline so you can follow the guideline like bosch guideline and you can follow the guideline like biva and we have something called nih guideline which stands for national institute of health guideline and we have the Center for Disease Control, that is the CDC guideline. And you can also read about the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare guideline, which is issued by our own Indian government. So make sure like you guys are going to be thorough with this, this kind of guideline. So any guideline, it can come pertain into the vaccination and the diagnostic strategy and the diagnostic modality. So make sure you are going to know about it. So last but not least, as days moves towards your exam, try to wake up early and try to increase the study hour and like in case if you are going to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning try to wake up at 6 and the following 6 try to wake up at 5 and 4 and try to have the morning early morning revision hours like telling you guys like the early morning revision guys is going to give you a very good time like revision time is going to be very important for studying those kind of important thing which you studied the day earlier and try to follow the revision protocol and you are going to re-emphasize the revision read and recall uh, strategy so once you are going to read you are going to recall it and you are going to re-revise it and following that you are going to do the re-emphasization so re-emphasization is going to be like uh, doing all the three things which you did before so that's going to be the re-emphasize the revision is going to be an important role in the, your neat preparation so try to put more effort on your need so the particular revision can take much time but again like the particular time is going to be very much useful for your examination and try to spend more time for revision and as days nearer to the exam like try to solve many mcqs as possible in case if you are going to leave gap in case if you are not going to revise like i'm telling you guys you are going to forget many things which you studied prior so it's going to go into waste so try to revise so the revision is going to be very much essential for the examination and whenever like you are going to study the theoretical uh, topic split the hour and read multiple topics in a day to avoid monotonous study session so whenever like you are going to study stick on to a single topic like general microbiology or immunology like uh, it's going to be very much boring so what you can do is that you can read one topic in general one topic in uh, immunology then one topic in parasitology one topic in virology one topic in parasitology and miscellaneous so you can uh, avoid the monotonicity by following this particular strategy so which will be very much useful in case like uh, if you are going to feel bored about the particular uh, topic and revision and recollection is must as i previously told and many of you will ask uh, this uh, about the neat uh, super specialty failure so in case if you are going to fail in neat uh, ss examination like don't get fed up guys so it is going to be a single uh, day session which is going to tell about how far you are thorough with the subject it will tell you how much you have learned the subject and where you are in the particular subject so in case you are not going to get to see this time don't get fed up and try to repeat the attempt and try to give more attempt like uh, whenever like you are going to give more attempt like you are going to go up front and there are very good chance like you are going to get the seat and try to wake up early and uh, as the exam approaches the uh, nearby months example the four month uh, before and all like try to wake up at least before six and before five and try to have a strict revision hour like it may be like the revision can take around two to three hours but i'm telling you guys that revision hours is going to be a major thing in your uh, neat ss preparation so totally how many seats are there so post md microbiology so the feeder qualification for dm virology is going to be md microbiology so following md microbiology in order to, if you want to go to dm virology we have totally four seats all over india so two seats are there in CMC Vellur and two seats are there in Government Tunnelveli Medical College Hospital which is there in Tunnelveli. So there are totally four seats as far now and uh, that can be raised in the future. So post MD Microbiology you can aim for DM Virology then we have the DM Infectious Diseases and we have uh, the DM Genetics and we also have various uh, PDCC and fellowship uh, courses in various institute like Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences and uh, Jipmer and AIMS we have various PDCC and fellowship which will be available and uh, there can be entrance exam in the frequent uh, years so I hope like it will be useful for uh, you guys so this is how uh, like I studied for my NEET super specialty examination and I cracked my NEET super specialty and I took DM virology seat in uh, government Thinalveli Medical College so I wish all the 
great success for you guys and all the best take care